wikipediaworld.com this is somja janayar your online biology tutor the chapter is environmental issues in this video we are going to discuss about solid waste and its management agrochemicals and their effect radioactive wastes greenhouse effect etc solid waste solid waste refer to everything that goes out in trash municipal solid waste are waste from homes offices stores schools hospitals etc that are collected and disposed by municipality the municipal solid waste generally comprise paper food waste plastic glass metals rubber leather textiles etc burning reduces the volume of the waste although it is generally not burned to completion and open dumps often serve as the breeding ground for rats and flies sanitary landfills were adopted as the substitute for open burning dumps in a sanitary landfill wastes are dumped in a depression or trench after compaction and covered with dirt every day categories of solid waste the garbage is divided into four broad categories the first one organic waste that include kitchen waste vegetables flowers leaf fruits second one toxic waste old medicines paints chemicals bulbs spray cans fertilizer pesticide containers batteries shoe polish etc third one recyclable paper glass metal plastics are recyclable last one soiled garbage hospital waste such as clothes soiled with blood and other body fluids solid waste management a solution to all this can only be in human beings becoming more sensitive to the environmental issues all wastes that we generate can be categorized into three types biodegradable recyclable and non biodegradable it is very important that all garbage generated is sorted that can be reused or recycled separated out our kabdi walas and rag pickers do a great job of separation of material for recycling the biodegradable material can be put into deep pits into ground and be left for natural breakdown the le that leaves only the non biodegradable to be deposited off the need to reduce our garbage generation should be a prime goal instead we are increasing the use of non biodegradable product types of litter generate and the approximate time it takes to degenerate the litters like organic waste such as vegetable and fruit peels left over food scraps etc will take a week or two to degenerate paper 10 to 30 days cotton clothes 2 to 5 months wood 10 to 15 years woolen items 1 year tin aluminum and other metal item 100 to 500 years plastic bags will take 1 million years or we don't know glass bottle undetermined remedy for plastic wastes a plastic sack manufacturer in bangalore has managed to find the ideal solution to the ever increasing problem of accumulating plastic waste his name is ahmed khan he has been producing plastic sack for 20 years about 8 years ago he realized that plastic waste was a real problem poly blend a fine powder of recycled modified plastic was developed then by his company this mixture is mixed with the bitumen that is used to lay roads in collaboration with rv college of engineering and the bangalore city corporation ahmed can prove that blends of poly blend and bitumen when used to lay roads it enhances the bitumen's water repellent properties and will help to increase the road life by a factor of 3 electronic wastes repairable computers and other electronic goods are called electronic wastes or e wastes e wastes are buried in landfills or incinerators unlike developed countries which have special specifically built facilities for recycling of e wastes 
Recycling in developing countries often involve manual participation, thus exposing the workers to toxic substances present in these e-wasters. Eventually, recycling is the only solution for the treatment of e-waste, provided it is carried out in the environment-friendly manner. Hospital Waste Hospital waste is generated during the diagnosis, treatment or immunization of human beings or animals or in research activities in the field or in the production or testing of biologicals. Hospitals generate hazardous waste that contain in disinfectants and other harmful chemicals and also pathogenic microorganisms. Such waste also require careful treatment and disposal. The use of incinerator is crucial to disposal of hospital waste. Agrochemicals and their effects In the wake of Green Revolution, use of inorganic fertilizers and pesticides has increased the manifold for enhancing the crop production. Pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, etc. are being increasingly used. These incidentally are also toxic to non-target organisms that are important components of the soil ecosystem. An agrochemical is defined as a chemical such as fertilizer, hormone, fungicide, insecticide or soil treatment that improves the production of crop. The use of agrochemicals raises crop production to meet to demand for food with increasing population. Types of agrochemicals First one fertilizers Second one timing and acidifying agents Third one soil conditioners Fourth one pesticides Fifth one chemicals used in animal husbandry such as antibiotics and hormones Environmental effect Agrochemical increases plant and animal crop production. On the other hand, it causes a lot of damage to the environment. The excess use of chemical fertilizers increase the contamination of groundwater with nitrate, which is very poisonous to man and animals in large concentration. The run of fertilizers into ponds, streams, lakes and other surface water can increase the algal growth and it will lead to the death of fishes and other aquatic animals. Insecticides like DDT remain active for many years in the environment and it will contaminate all wildlife, food grains and surface water including humans. Millions of wild birds are killed every year in North America due to the exposure from these agriculture insecticides called carbofuran and control measures taken. Various environmental effects due to agrochemicals have created worldwide concern. Now the approach is to shift from chemical method. Non-chemical methods of enhancing soil fertility and dealing pests. The United Nations Environment Program organized a meeting in the year 2000 and banned the production and use of tall persistent organic pollutants, especially those used as pesticides. These 12 chemicals have been named as dirty dozen. Eight of them are pesticides such as aldrin, fluoridane, DDT, daldrin, endrin, heptachlor, mirex, and toxophene. What are radioactive wasters? Radioactive wasters are those wasters which produce radiations. Radiations that is given off by nuclear waste is extremely damaging to biological organisms because it causes mutation to occur at a very high rate. At high doses, nuclear radiation is very lethal, but lower doses it creates various disorders, the most frequent of all being cancer. Therefore, nuclear waste is an extremely potent pollutant and has to be dealt with at most question. It has been recommended that Storage of nuclear waste after sufficient pre-treatment should be done in suitably shielded containers and buried within the rocks about 500 meters deep below the earth's surface. What is greenhouse effect? The term greenhouse effect has been derived from a phenomenon that occurs in a greenhouse. Have you ever seen a greenhouse? It is a small glass house and is used for growing plants especially during winter time. In a greenhouse, 
the glass panel lets the light in but it does not allow the heat to escape from it therefore the greenhouse warms up very much like inside a car that has been parked in the sun for a few hours the greenhouse effect is naturally occurring phenomena that is responsible for heating of the earth surface and atmosphere the greenhouse effect how it is working in order to understand the greenhouse effect in detail it is very necessary to know the fate of the energy of sunlight that reaches the outer most atmosphere of the earth the clouds and gases reflect about one fourth of the incoming solar radiation and absorb some of it but almost half of incoming solar radiation falls on earth surface heating it while a small proportion is reflected back at surface we emit heat in the form of infrared radiation but part of this does not escape into space as atmospheric gases example carbon dioxide methane etc absorb a major fraction of it the molecules of these gases radiate this heat energy and a major part of which again comes to earth surface thus heating it up once again this cycle is repeated many times the above mentioned gases like carbon dioxide methane are commonly known as greenhouse gases because they are responsible for the greenhouse effect this is the representation of the sunlight energy reaching the outer atmosphere the greenhouse gases absorb long wave infrared radiation from the earth and emit it again towards the earth the cycle continues till the earth surface has no long wave radiation to emit and this is the layer of greenhouse gases you can see the sunlight come and hitting on the layer of greenhouse gases and this greenhouse gases absorb that and it will radiate it again this is called the greenhouse effect this is the graphical representation of the relative contribution of various greenhouse gases to the total global warming uh, cfc's contribute to 14 percentage n2o to 6 percentage we then contribute to 20 percentage and carbon dioxide is the highest contributing one 60 percentage for the total global warming global warming increase in the level of greenhouse gases lead to the considerable heating of earth and that lead to global warming during the past century the temperature of earth has increased by 0.6 degrees centigrade most of it during the last three decades scientists believe that this rise in temperature is leading to the deleterious changes in the environment and resulting in old climatic changes how can we control this global warming the measures include cutting down use of fossil fuels improving efficiency of energy usage reducing deforestation planting trees and slowing down the growth of human population international initiatives are also being taken to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere ozone depletion in the stratosphere ozone is found in the upper part of the atmosphere called the stratosphere and it acts as the shield absorbing ultraviolet radiation from the sun These ultraviolet rays are very injurious to living organisms since DNA and proteins of living organisms preferentially absorb UV rays and its high energy breaks the chemical bonds within these molecules the thickness of the ozone in a column of air from the ground to the top of the atmosphere is measured in tens of dobson unit or du ozone gas is continuously formed by the action of UV rays on molecular oxygen and also degraded into molecular oxygen in the stratosphere there should be a balance between production and degradation of ozone in the stratosphere of late the balance has been disturbed due to enhancement of ozone degradation by chlorofluorocarbons or cfcs cfcs find wide use as refrigerants cfcs discharge in the lower part of the atmosphere move upwards and reach stratosphere in the stratosphere uv rays act on them releasing the chlorine atoms this degrade the ozone releasing molecular oxygen with these atoms acting merely as a catalyst cl atoms are not consumed in the reaction hence whatever cfcs are added to the stratosphere had permanent and continuing effect on ozone level although ozone depletion is occurring widely in stratosphere 
the depletion is particularly marked over the Antarctic region. This has resulted in the formation of a large area of thin ozone layer commonly called as the ozone hole. This is a picture of ozone hole. The ozone hole is the area above the Antarctica. It is shown in the purple color in the picture where the ozone layer is the thinnest. Degradation by improper resort utilization and maintenance is another environmental issue we face. The degradation of natural resources can occur not just by the action of pollutants but also by improper resource utilization practices. The first one is soil erosion and desertification. The development of fertile topsoil takes centuries but it can be removed very easily due to human activities like over cultivation, unrestricted grazing, deforestation and poor irrigation practices and resulting in arid patches of land. When large barren patches extend and meet over time, a desert is created. Internationally, it has been recognized that desertification is a major problem nowadays, particularly due to increased urbanization. The next one is water logging and soil salinity. Irrigation without proper drainage of water leads to water logging in the soil. Besides affecting the crops, water logging draws salt to the surface of the soil. The salt then is deposited as a thin crust on the land surface or starts collecting at the roots of the plants. This increased salt content is inimical to the growth of crop and is extremely damaging to agriculture. Water logging and soil salinity are some of the problems that have come in the wake of green revolution. Deforestation and reforestation Deforestation is the other major environmental issue we are facing nowadays. Deforestation is the conversion of a forested area to non-forested ones. How does deforestation occur? A number of human activities contribute to it. One of the major reasons is the conversion of forest to agricultural land so as to feed the growing human population. Trees are acts for timber, firewood, cattle ranging and for several other purposes and this increases the deforestation rate. Then what is reforestation? It is the process of restoring a forest that once existed but was removed at some point of time in the past. Reforestation may occur naturally in a deforested area. However, we can speed it up by planting trees with due consideration to biodiversity that earlier existed in that area. So these are the major environmental issues we humans facing in nowadays. So we should be more careful to decrease all these environmental issues at least in future. So thus I am winding up this chapter and this is the last video for the zoology syllabus of the plus 2 batch. Thank you so much.